obviously, you know, it's been a couple of weeks to sort of evaluate and assess where things are at with this team. Uh, what are your impressions uh, compared to the preseason of where this team's at? Um, obviously, we got off to a good start. I think the last, this past, last, this weekend and and last week has kind of kicked us a little bit down to earth and, and the guys need to respond. They need to understand that talent alone isn't going to take them anywhere. Like, uh, you know, I kept telling them, Earth is a good team. Watching them on film, they don't beat themselves. I don't think uh, they realize, you know, I'm a California guy, so I know the history there and, and what they do, but I don't think our boys quite realize it's not Oregon State. They think Irvine's gonna be a little bit easier, but no, they're, they're as good a team in the country, honestly. I, I told them about two weeks back, I said, hey, that's gonna be a, the toughest challenge we're gonna have the first three weeks, honestly, because uh, they put the ball in play and they don't beat themselves. So I think our guys need to step up to the challenge and need to understand that talent alone is not gonna get them Ws. Starting pitching started off really, really strong first five games, obviously, and it's really, almost been completely opposite the, the last several. What changed from your impressions? Nothing's changed. I think uh, they're a little concerned about that radar gun and what it reads behind them. You know, if I could take that away from them, I think they would be better off, obviously. But it it shows it on every every Pac-12 place we go to, so they got to learn to deal with it. You know, I think they look back there and talked to Olin about it yesterday. He came out there 94-95 in the zone. But when he gets down to 90, 91, he starts nibbling. He doesn't think his stuff's good enough, which is not the case. He, he, his stuff's good enough. He needs to be able to continue attacking. So I think uh, the starting pitching has been a victim of, they came out the first week, they were amped up, everyone's stuff was up, they got away with it without having to pitch. Um, we went down to Mississippi State, opened up a good Friday. Saturday, I thought we pitched well, despite of what happened. I thought uh, Curtis got squeezed a little bit in, in the last four games. They've tried to overpower people instead of pitching. You know, you saw what those guys did. You compare arm to arm. I mean, it's not a comparison. Of, you know, no disrespect to them. They've done a good job of changing speeds and, and locating and not beating themselves. So it's not necessarily like a confidence thing. It's just no. Kinda... I think it's them overdoing it. They're right. trying way too hard. In Timmy's case, you know, I haven't had a chance to talk to Timmy, but you talk about the guy that landed every single breaking ball in the bullpen as we're warming up. And he comes out and, and he doesn't land a single breaking ball. I mean, that to me, he's trying too hard. He's amped up. He's trying to make the perfect pitch. He needs to understand his stuff's good enough to just throw a regular one. It doesn't have to be the best one out of his hand every single time out. Was, um, he had a, also a tough time against Mississippi State. Um, Timmy? Last, yeah, Timmy yeah. did last yeah. Sunday. Was there, what were the, sort of the similarities or differences between that? I, I thought it was exactly the same. He warmed up great, got the breaking ball over, change up. For Timmy's case, he's got a power breaking ball. I mean, it's probably the best around here. I mean, one of the best in college baseball. I can't imagine it being there being more than a handful of guys that have a better one. But he's got to land it. And he, he comes in the pen and he lands it. And I'm trying to get him to understand, in the pen, you're 90, 95% at it. In a game, flying open and it's coming out of hand and it pops out of his hand he needs to land that breaking ball to be successful he doesn't even need to land it all the time he just needs to land it half the time and he'll be successful you know so he needs to understand he's got to take something off of it and uh you know it's a tough weekend it's not a time for us to panic we need to just get back and get back to the drawing board and those guys got kicked in the you know what you know and, and now they get to bounce back and show what they could do. And I think uh, that's the only thing we can do is get back to work and, and they need to understand they're good enough to do it. They just have to bounce back, you know. Do you guys have a plan for who's gonna start the two midweek games in Stillwater? Oh uh, yeah, we had a plan going into it. Uh, I, I, I just gotta confirm it with Coach Bloomquist, but you know, uh, maybe Maddie T and, and Owen Stevenson, you know, Maddie, Maddie, and I've been talking about Jonah, man. He, he got his chance, you saw what he could do. Mm -hmm. like. He doesn't light up the gun, but he just competes and he gets after it. He doesn't beat himself. So you know, I wouldn't be surprised to find him in the mix there to start as well, depending on how he feels. How, uh, how fluid are some of the starting roles, you know, just in terms of on the weekends, maybe weeks you guys are still kind of figuring out the order there? Mm -hmm. uh, it's ever changing. They got to perform. They got to perform on bottom line. You know, we're going to look at some of it and see where they stand, we're going to give some guys a different chance this, this Tuesday, Wednesday against Oklahoma State, and if they perform, 
you know, we, we could change it up. I mean, I think those guys need to understand that they got to pitch for that job, you know, and, and they got really good stuff. But the, the one thing that I think would be different between this year and last year, and, and I know we're going through a little tough spell, is we have options. Where last year we have to keep running those guys out there because we didn't have options. This year they got to understand a couple guys that have come in behind the starter have done a pretty good job. So, you know, we have some options to go with. You spoke really highly of Stevenson in the preseason, preseason mm -hmm. particular, uh, and said you could easily see him potentially mm -hmm. in a weekend role. Um, is that some? Is that a plan now? Is that something you guys are going to try and go forward with? Or? Yeah, I mean we're going to see. He might end up starting one of the games in Stillwater, like I said, and then we'll see how how, how long we use him. But I think he's capable of doing it. He's just in his case, like I said earlier, he's just a guy that you know Irvine came up to me and was. Man, that guy was 88 to 89 last year. Now he's 95, 96. Like, in his case, he needs to understand that, yeah, he's hitting that now, but he still needs to pitch. Mm -hmm. You know, he comes in with absolute electricity in the first two innings. Like, you know, you're knocking bats out of people's hands. You're not even, you don't have to throw a ball by them to beat a bat. But you have to still be able to learn to pitch, drop your secondary in there. So. I think with his newfound velocity, his newfound stuff, he needs to remember the pitcher that he was and apply both things. So I, I do think he could, he's definitely capable of it. Uh, at this point, you know, like I said, I haven't talked to coach, coach about it, but we're, we're going to have to look at some different options if, if our guys can't extend and can't get the game started the right way. With three passes is an issue all weekend. These mm -hmm. guys are Pac-12 pitchers. They're mm -hmm. obviously capable mm -hmm. of throwing strikes. How do you kind of coach them through that and try to – down on that because you can only say throw so much yeah we, we talked about that today we were like hey you know I don't want it to go through deaf ears but at the same time it's gonna be if you if you, we're gonna have a quick hook and we told that to Timmy today like if you're gonna have at this point we gave you two weeks to, to do it if you're gonna go two free passes in an inning we have capable guys behind there it may not be as electric as some of those starters are as you guys see but they'll get the bats moving. They'll get the bats moving like Jonah did today. And I thought Jonah did a great job of keeping us in there. You know, I was hoping we could scratch a run or two out there and I thought it would have been a little more interesting uh, because I thought they, they had gone through so many arms in the pen this whole weekend that we just needed to get another guy in there besides that starter. Obviously, you guys seem to have already kind of sort of moved on from last season and everything, but are there any parallels you feel like between the rough stretch at the beginning of last year, second weekend against BYU that led to that sort of early hole. Do you see any parallels between then and now? Uh, besides getting swept, no. I mean, <laughs> you know, they swept us and they came, they beat us by one, I think twice, coming back mm -hmm. from behind, right. if I remember correctly. You know, we had the lead and we got a chance to win it. And it was our bullpen that, that kind of let us down last year. This year is actually our bullpen that kept us in it. You know, they gave us a chance, a fighting chance with, with TD on Friday and, and today with Jonah. So, it, this is just they got to understand the brand of baseball that coach wants them to play. They got to be smarter. Um, you know, no disrespect, Luke Hill, great player. He's swinging 2 0 in that last inning. Coach told them, hey, we're taking the strike. They, they got to understand the fine details of it. That's how those teams win. That's how those teams, you know, that's how UC Irvine's able to come in here and take three from us. They don't beat themselves. And once we stop beating ourselves, we have plenty of ability. We have, uh, you know, we did a good enough job, a good job in bringing the talent in. They just got to stop beating themselves. I'm curious that uh, decision by Luke there in the final inning, was that, do you think some of that is sort of because of like some hot performances recently? No, I, no, he's just a freshman and, and uh, you know, we got to, in today's era, it, they play a lot of travel ball and then a lot of high school ball. And uh, sometimes as coaches, we need to remember that they're not necessarily as polished when they come up here and knowing the game itself, right? He's in a regular weekend tournament at some random place. They're letting him swing too low to showcase himself, right? And he's got to understand that that's just not, we're not going to do that. We're, we're chasing six, five runs at a time. We need base runners. Let that guy off the hook a little bit, and he'll learn. He's a good kid. He, he's obviously extremely talented, and he'll he'll learn from that. Thanks, Sam. Thanks.